Best 5 Motorola smartphone are offered in a wide variety, each with unique features, benefits, and prices. I did a massive amount of research, reviewed a ton of reviews, and put up a list of the best 5 Motorola smartphone from trustworthy brands to assist you in making a decision. After extensive investigation, I discovered these goods to benefit people like you. If you are curious to learn more about the price and other information, be sure read my description. Without further ado let's watch the video. Number 1. Total by Verizon Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G, 128GB. The Moto G Stylus 5G runs on the Snapdragon 695 5G platform, which is faster than the Moto G 5G's MediaTek Dimensity 700 chip. The model we tested has 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage whereas the regular Moto G is limited to 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. This spec bump is appreciated, and the benchmark results underscore the performance differential. For instance, on the PC Markwork 3.0 test, the Moto G Stylus 5G rated 10,025, appreciably higher than the Moto G's 7,880. The Samsung Galaxy A53 5G managed to score 11,675 on the same test. Moving to Geekbench, the Moto G Stylus 5G turned in scores of 669 and 1,913 for the single and multi-core tests respectively. Those results are consistent with the Galaxy A53, which rated 728 and 1826. Benchmarks don't always tell the whole story, and we were impressed with the phone's everyday performance. It handled most apps just fine and only slowed down when we ran graphically rich games. Speaking of which, the phone has a basic gaming overlay that lets you stream to Twitch, set the frame rate, and block notifications. These improve the gaming experience some. For example, Alto's Odyssey is a basic game that can run on just about any hardware and the phone handled it without issue. We also installed Rocket League Sideswipe to test speed and reactions. The Moto G Stylus 5G had no problems here, either. To fully tax the GPU, we installed Genshin Impact and PUBG Mobile. Genshin Impact ran well at the lowest settings it is playable at medium settings if you are willing to sacrifice frame rates. The handset had no problems with PUBG Mobile with the low resolution texture pack installed. The phone's 5,000mAh battery exceeds expectations. The Moto G Stylus 5G lasted 13 hours and 10 minutes in our battery drain test. Last year's Moto G Stylus hung around for 15 hours and 30 minutes on the same test, though its 60Hz display doesn't require as much power. Google's Pixel 5a, 12 hours and 9 minutes, and Samsung's Galaxy A53, 12 hours and 30 minutes didn't last quite as long as the newer Motorola in testing. The cameras on the Moto G Stylus 5G perform in line with the price and thus won't blow you away. The primary camera uses a 50MP sensor with an aperture of f 1.1.9. It bends images down by a factor of 4 to 12.5MP, which is supposed to help improve low light performance. The phone adds an 8MP ultra wide angle camera with a 118 degree field of view and macro capabilities and a 2MP depth sensor at f 2.4 for assistance with number 2 Moto G Power 2021 3-day battery unlocked made for US by Motorola 464 gigabyte the Moto G Power is a handful at 6.6 .6 by 3.0 by 0.4 inches HWD and 7.2 ounces it distributes its weight well across its plastic chassis However, additionally, the phone's textured mate black back feels good in the hand, helps with grip, and doesn't show off fingerprints or scratches. A flat, 6.5-inch LCD offers the same 1,600x720 resolution, 269p, as the 2021 Moto G Power, albeit with a faster 90Hz refresh rate. A small cutout for the 8MP selfie camera sits near the top of the display, in the center. 720p resolution is the biggest letdown here. Although the screen displays accurate colors, you can notice some pixel when you look closely. And while viewing angles are good, 
We wish the panel was a little brighter because it's hard to see in direct sunlight. A headphone jack sits on the top edge of the phone, while the bottom edge houses a USB-C charging port and speaker. A combo SIM and micro slot is the only port on the left, while a volume rocker and textured power button are on the right. The buttons are easy to identify by touch. But you might have trouble reaching them if you have small hands. On the back of the G Power, a thin module for the camera sensors sits in the upper left corner. And while the power button on last year's G Power doubled as a fingerprint sensor, that has been moved to the back of the phone here it works quickly and accurately, and doesn't require as precise of a touch as in display or side mounted sensors. The phone's durability is on par with other similarly priced models. Its plastic back and chassis are likely to handle a drop without much damage, but we can't say this can't say the same for its strength and glass panel. An IP52 rating means it should handle rain, splashes, and sweat without a problem but likely won't survive a drop in the pool or sink. The Moto G Power has a 5,000mAh battery that Motorola claims will last three days between charges. Unless you're a very conservative user, we think you're more likely to get about two days, but that's nothing to sneeze at. In our battery rundown test, which streams HD video over Wi-Fi at full brightness, the G Power lasted for 16 hours and 7 minutes before shutting down. That's just over 3 hours longer than the similarly priced Samsung Galaxy A32 5G. Unfortunately, recharging is a slow affair at 10 watts. The Galaxy A32 5G supports 18 watts charging by comparison. And as with most phones in this price range, the Moto G Power doesn't support wireless charge. Number 3. Moto G Stylus 2022 2 day battery unlocked made for US by Motorola 6 128GB 50MP camera. Running Android 12, the Moto G Stylus 5G doesn't necessarily impress when it comes to performance, but it doesn't disappoint either. With the Snapdragon 695 processor and 8GB of RAM at the helm, you're definitely getting the mid-range experience but certainly the better end of that spectrum. In my experience, it handled streaming, maps, and ticket functionality without issue, even in battery saver mode. The phone's battery life is impressive. Its 5000 mAh cell offers some serious power, even when on the lower end of its life. Tested at a Bulls playoffs game starting at only 25%, the phone made at home 4 hours later with 8% after posting about the game, getting directions to the United Center, and checking our parking spot on spot here. Unfortunately, the charging speed is simply not up to snuff, taking 191 minutes to go from 1% to 100% with a 10 watts charger provided and limited usage. You do get a lot of battery life after just a few minutes of charging but the overall speed felt pretty slow compared to the average device. As for the interface, the Android 12 fits pretty well with the Moto G Stylus 5G, providing a simple setup process that offers extra prompts to personalize your device, including a dedicated Moto app, shown above, that walks you through it. It doesn't have all the eye-powered assistance of the Google Pixel lineup, but it's more than enough to get you more familiar with the device without having to dive too deep into the settings menu. With 8GB of RAM, it should be well set up for long-term sustained performance, and Motorola's commitment to one OS upgrade and by monthly security updates for three years should keep you happy for a while. The Moto G Stylus 5G has a 50MP main camera along with ultra wide and macro lenses and a depth sensor available for a complete camera setup. It even provides a pro mode, which true to its name is definitely not for the uninitiated photographer. You'll get a lot of technical metrics and options that can help you take the extra picture you want. But don't bother if you aren't proficient in the photographic arts. As for how the pictures look, they aren't bad. As a Pixel user for many years, I become a bit spoiled by their software-powered glamour shots that make virtually anything look amazing. Still, I was pleasantly surprised by the cameras on the Moto G Stylus 5G. It took some seriously crisp, detailed pictures although they at times looked a bit over-sharpened depending on the setting. The ultra Amide provides the 118-degree field of view to get everything in the picture, 
a feature I'm always happy to find on a mid-tier phone. The mount, the macro lens, is, well, it's not as good as it should be, but will still get some cool shots if you can find the right condition. Number 4. Moto G Stylus 5G 2021 2-day battery unlocked made for US by Motorola 6 256GB 48MP camera. The Moto G Stylus 2022s battery life is outstanding. Motorola has consistently dialed an excellent battery life for its mid-range family, and this device is no different. The phone has the same 5,000mAh battery that's stuffed into many of its stable mates and it consistently pushed through at least a day and a half. It was even able to reach two full days on occasion and you can't ask for much more than that from a modern smartphone. The stylus is not Bluetooth enabled, nor does it have a button for secondary actions. Instead, it simply acts as an alternate input method for interacting with the screen. In that respect, it's accurate and quick. There are some special apps aboard that take advantage of the stylus, including an O-taking app a way to gate gifts and live messages, as well as a simple coloring book to entertain kids. For people who want the option, it's a nice addition to the phone. The phone felt fluid and quick with no lag, and performance was smooth across the board. It ran demanding games like Asphalt 9, Legends and Genshin Impact at a playable frame rate, though the phone didn't deliver the best benchmark scores. This is consistent with results we've seen on other Snapdragon 695 phones, such as the OnePlus Nord N20. The bottom line is that most owners will be plenty satisfied with the Moto G Stylus 5G's performance uh, considering some of the issues we've seen with lag and stutter on other recent Moto G phones. This wasn't a given. It's also great to see a budget Motorola phone with the latest version of Android out of the box. Motorola's build of Android 12 is solid and it runs well on the G Stylus 5G. The brand left most of the elements of Android 12 intact, which means core experiences such as the home screen, quick settings shade, settings menu, and app drawer all mirror what you'll see on a Google Pixel phone. Rather than sprinkle its customizations throughout the user interface, Motorola contained them within a single app called Simply Moto. Here you can take advantage of Motorola's tweaks to Android if you wish and do things like personalize the layout, enable gestures, view tips and tricks, make changes to the display, and customize the gaming experience. It's dead simple to use these tools to make the phone your own. Wireless performance was excellent, though there are some limitations. The phone supports sub 6 GHz 5G services. We tested it on Verizon's 5G network and the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022 ran really well where Verizon's mid-band was available. There's no wave support on board, so you won't see the absolute top 5G speeds in those rare wave-enabled areas, but the phone's mobile data is plenty quick. The unlocked model supports a wider range of 5G bands that should be compatible with the extensive array of carriers that will eventually sell the phone. Number 5. Motorola Edge Plus 2022 4800mAh battery unlocked made for US 8 512GB 50MP camera. This Motorola isn't this small phone. Yes, it also isn't the biggest out there, thanks to its very slim display bezels but I did find it a bit of a handful. Its body is boxier in real life, which doesn't really help with ergonomics. The Motorola Edge 30 Pro is also pretty slippery, even though it has a matte back, so you should definitely use it with a case. At least the phone feels pretty light and thin, especially considering its size. The iconic Motorola logo on the back isn't textured, which is a bit of a missed opportunity for a distinctive design element if you ask me. Still, it looks very nice and reflects light a lot. The camera module for the three cameras doesn't protrude a whole lot from the body. This way the phone doesn't wobble when put on a flat surface. The module itself is covered with plastic glass, but this doesn't make it feel cheap. The cameras aren't covered by this glass. They have separate real glass housings just like the iPhone 13 series. These are nice to the touch, but also very easy to smudge, 
so be careful before you open the camera app. Motorola Z30 Pro has nice metal sides which could always be mistaken for plastic due to their glossy finish. These aren't very grippy either. All buttons are on the right side and the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. The scanner is fast and unproblematic but I would have loved to see an in-display one. The volume buttons offer good feedback but feel pretty small for such a big phone. These are also put very high, which makes them hard to reach for people with smaller hands. As mentioned earlier, this front has pretty tiny bezels on the front. The display's edges are round and the phone's top and bottom bezels look symmetrical. This gives the Edge 30 Pro's front a very balanced look. A punch hole camera is located in the middle. There isn't a headphone jack on this phone. A Microsoft card slot is also nowhere to be found, which might be a bummer to some. It has an IP52 water resistance rating which means it can withstand drops of water but cannot be submerged. Surprise, surprise, Motorola has finally released a phone with a flagship caliber chipset in the USA. Not that it hasn't before, but it's been a long time since it last did. The Motorola Edge 30 Pro's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor is simply amazing. Early reports stated that this chipset heats up easily. But that's not the case with this latest Motorola flagship. This phone doesn't feel warm even when you're gaming hard. The performance itself is one of the best I've ever seen. This phone opens heavy apps and games like it's nothing. I got the variant with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of UFS 3.1 storage. I've had no issues with multitasking as this phone easily kept 10 or so apps open. I believe that even if you go for the 8GB of RAM variant it will still handle multitasking nicely, as its software feels pretty well optimized.